Oh, to Messy Church. Hi, Layla. How are things with you? Have you had a good half term? Yes, I have. It's been really fun because we've taken lots of road trips and gone to lots of parks. Are you enjoying the sunny weather, Helen? Very much so. It's nice to be here in your garden today and I've been enjoying walks with friends and picnics. That sounds nice. Should, I do our, should we do our countdown so we can find out what our theme is for this month? Yes, let's. Ready? Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Messy job! So, do we have any idea of what we're going to be looking at today? Well, I think maybe it's another person who met Jesus. Well, I've already, well, we've already looked at Mary Magdalene and Peter. It could be another one of his disciples, couldn't it? Maybe, maybe John? Hmm. Well, I'm looking at some of the clues we've got, and there's bits of paper, pens, the map. Binoculars? Binoculars, yeah. And um, maybe it was somebody who liked adventuring and maybe writing a lot. Paul. I think it's going to be Paul. Oh, yeah. Good suggestion. Should we say goodbye for now and find out if you're right? See you next month for our last messy trip before the summer. everyone and welcome to our messy church craft so this month we're going to find out about somebody who didn't even like talking about Jesus but then when he met Jesus Jesus changed his life and he wanted to go and tell everybody all about Jesus and how wonderful he was and he did this by sailing around in a boat so we thought it might be nice if we made our own boats so let's see what we've got, we've got a sponge and a stick and some paper so I think we need to make a sail for our boat. And we're going to find out more about this person a bit later in Messy Church. So you can make your sail whatever shape you like. And I'm getting totally confused about what shape I'm going to make my, my sail. So I think I'm going to use that bit for my sail. And I'm just going to put a couple of little slits in it. And you might need somebody to help you with the scissors. It's a bit tricky. And then I'm just going to thread the stick through the paper, which is our sail. And you might like to decorate your sail. You might like to put a pattern on it or a picture. So there's my sail. And then we need to just fold our sponge in half, make a little hole for the stick to go in. Give it a good snip. Oh, I don't know if my scissors are working today. Hope you've got some sharp scissors. And put your sail into your sponge. And there we have our boat. And here's another boat that Rachel made. And I think we should see if our boats can sail around and take the person who we're going to be finding all about on the journey to tell everybody the good news of Jesus. Oh, is it going to float? Oh, it is. And it's not capsized. It hasn't turned over. It's doing some good floating. I think that's going to go a long way. Let's see if this one's really good too. I hope your boats float just as good as my boat and Rachel's boat. Maybe you could have a race in the bath. Maybe you could make a few boats and have fun. But I hope you enjoy finding out about this person whose life was changed by Jesus. See you later. Bye.
The Story of Saul and How He Became Paul Saul was a Pharisee who lived in the years shortly after Jesus' death and resurrection. Pharisees were people who liked to keep rules. They read the rules God had given his people and then added more rules to help people follow those rules and so on. I'm sure you get the picture. They thought that following lots of rules would make God happy with them, but they missed the point, as soon as Saul would soon find out. As we heard last month, in the days and weeks following Pentecost, the group of Jesus' followers, that we now call the church, grew in size really quickly. The Pharisees didn't like this, because Jesus' followers were telling people that the way to being friends with God again wasn't by following lots of rules and being good, but by trusting Jesus. Saul had got permission from the church to travel to a city called Damascus to arrest the people and the Christians and bring them back to Jerusalem and put them in prison. As he was travelling to Damascus, he saw a flashing bright light around him. He immediately fell to the ground. Then he heard a voice. Saul, Saul, why are you doing all these things against me? Saul asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, the one who you are trying to hurt. Now get up and go to the city, and someone there will tell you what to do next. The lights had blinded Saul, so those, those who were with him led him into the city. For three days, Paul didn't eat or drink anything. Saul changed his name to Paul after he met Jesus, and became one of the leaders of the church. He travelled to lots of places, often by boat, telling people about Jesus and setting up new churches. In many of the places he visited, he ended up in prison, but that didn't worry him. Sometimes he had to escape from towns because the leaders thought he was a troublemaker and wanted to kill him. He also got shipwrecked. Paul kept in touch with the new churches by writing them letters, helping them to understand how to please God and live for Jesus. We have records of some of these letters in our Bibles today. The books of the New Testament from Romans to Philemon are actually all letters written by Paul. He wrote very personal things which can help us understand how meeting Jesus changed his life. In his letter to the church in Philippi, he wrote about all the reasons he had to be proud of himself and think he was great before he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. At one time, he had thought it was all about keeping rules, and that was why he had tried to hurt the church. But, he now writes, Now I think those things are worth nothing because of Jesus. Not only those things, but I think all things are worth nothing compared with the greatness of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. Because of Jesus, I have lost all those things. And now I know they are worthless rubbish. This allows me to have Jesus and belong to him. Wow. Paul certainly thought Jesus was amazing and was really happy to have had his life changed by him.
do the same Tuesday and Wednesday I remember You never change no Thursday I raise a melody Friday you're singing over me Saturday's the day I count my blessings Flowing from heaven All of my life I'll know that your love never ends Saturday night I'm ready to praise you again Clap, clap, step left, jump, turn around Praise that rocks the world Slide right hands up, down, stomp it out Praise that rocks the world Praise that rocks the world Hello there, and it's so nice to see and be with you for June's Messy Church. I hope you've been having lots of fun. I've got some more fun for you right now because this is our time when we get to talk to God and talking to the God who made us and created the whole universe. That's pretty fun. That's pretty awesome. So in your box, you should have received something like this. If you haven't received something like this, you're just going to need a piece of paper. Fold it in half and fold it in half again. Draw an outline of a person. Now, I've done this one because it makes a special shape and you'll see what I mean. OK, so I do recommend this shape either yourself or you can ask someone to help you cut it out. Turn it up and it makes ta -da! paper people and you notice it looks like they have love hearts so do you remember in our story we looked at how jesus changed somebody else's life and someone called saul and then later he went by paul and remember saul really wasn't nice to people who weren't like him he didn't have the same beliefs as him he wasn't very nice to them until jesus said what are you doing <laughs> like stop um and paul 
And um, like some people sadly do in this world, I thought that God only loved certain people. That God's love is a big word called exclusive, which means that only certain people that God is interested in and cares about. And that's not true. God made everyone, didn't he? Jesus came and died on the cross for everybody so that everybody could know God's love forever and ever. So we're going to think about and pray for people to know God's love today. You're going to want some pens to write or draw. And we're going to draw something for each of the four things. And then I'm going to say a prayer after each one. First of all, why don't you draw yourself? OK, uh, I have brown hair. Yes. Check. So I'm going to again, you can pause the video here if you want. And to draw yourself or you could write your name. You could write your prayers as well. I'm going to say my prayers out loud. And I have a smile. I've drawn myself. So let's pray for ourselves now. Dear God, thank you that you love me so much. And just like how you changed Paul's life, please help change my life so that I will never not know your love, that I always will know that you are with me by your Holy Spirit and that you will want to use me and do use me to make a big difference in your world. Thank you for me and thank you that I can know you. Amen. Second person. Sometimes, you know how Paul thought, oh, like, you know, that God was upset with Christians. You know, he, he wasn't very nice to them, remember, before he became a Christian himself. And so perhaps think of somebody who you would want to know God's love like it could be someone who you think isn't interested in God's love or perhaps needs to feel God's love you know maybe they're being bullied or people aren't always nice to them or maybe they're homeless or just a bit sad or you just really really want them to know God and to see what difference God can make in their life so you can think of somebody that you want to know God's love today and you're holding hands so you could perhaps we you know we might also pray for opportunities for us to show God's love to them so I'm going to draw my grandpa actually okay and my grandpa is I'm actually British American okay my grandpa the best things about him he has a very big mustache almost like the mustache that the Pringles can man wears well, has, not wears. Okay, so I'm going to do a really big moustache. Okay, his is a bit curly. <laughs> not making this up. So dear God, I bring, I think about the person that I've drawn or written about today. Or anyone else who needs to know that you love them. I pray that whatever they are feeling or experiencing, that they would know that you care so much for, about them. And I pray for opportunities for me to show your love to them too. Amen. Okay, now draw somebody who perhaps, now for this one, perhaps somebody who is from a different country, um, or is going through something very difficult. So I'm going to think of somebody who's from a country where there's a lot of war and bad things happening. So I'm going to think of someone from Syria. You know, you could draw any clothes on somebody and can just think about what country they're from. I'm going to draw somebody um, based on their flag. We pray for somebody from a different country who might need to know God's love maybe because there's war or they've had to leave home because of a storm or some sort of problem or they're seeking asylum or refuge like refuge in a different country like in this country so dear God we pray for people like in countries like Syria who need peace where there's terrible things happening very sad things they might not even have a home they might not have their family with them. They might be in a different country that's new and confusing. But I pray 
for chances for them to know you, to just experience your peace and love with them, God. And I pray that they'll be treated nicely and helped by people around them. Amen. And lastly, I'm going to pray for someone who helps people. So I'm going to pray for, I know a lot of people in the NHS who, you know, who are like nurses or doctors or other kind of staff. Um, so I'm going to pray for them. You could pray for teachers. You could pray for lots of people, people who work with refugees or homeless, people in the church. You could pray for lots of people who help others. So let's think of somebody who helps other people now like doctors and nurses. So God, I think of somebody now who helps other people. Thank you for them, God. Thank you for the care and love that they show other people. Please encourage them so that even when they are feeling like they are having a difficult day, that you help them to be able to keep going the next day and help them to be able to help others and to know your love too. Amen. Amen. And I'll see if you want to do on the back or if you wanted to write prayers or make another one, whatever you want. And you might notice that also the middle bits, they make hard. <laughs> so you could write in there um yes you can do some prayer people chain and now we're going to have the bubble song and the messy grace and thank you so much for joining us this month Bye. god is all around me in front and behind underneath and over me he's always by my Floating round me, I know God surrounds me. God is all around me, in front and behind, underneath and over me. He's always by my side. The parachute reminds me I am safe under His wing. it for this month thank you very very much for joining us i hope that you will join us next month when we're going to look at something else that jesus said and investigate that like good detectives now the last thing that we do together is say the messy grace so let's say this together now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. See you next time.